Praise the Lord. I want to share with you, I believe that we're at the tipping point of something that's going on in the church and within the, I say the church, I mean triumphant, I mean everywhere, I mean what God is doing globally and all the things that are happening right now that I think that God is testing us. He's testing the church for the blessings of tomorrow. And he's looking at the positive and he's looking at the negative within us. What will occur? How will we react? And what's happened within the church from when I first got saved, I shared this on Wednesday night, to now, it seems like we have drifted so much from the principles and the teaching of God's word into motivational speaking, into uh, prosperity, into all different kinds of doctrines. And one of the things, and I say this, understand where I'm coming from. We've learned to have great services. Listen to what I'm telling you. We at the church, triumphant, has learned to have great services, but without Jesus. But without Jesus. And that's what makes it dangerous. Because we can just kind of get along, but we're not really seeing the essence of God that is touching our lives, encouraging us, blessing us, that we see the grace and the strength of God, the endurance, the hope of understanding what He's trying to motivate us through the rough times, to the good times. And that's why I want to do a series of prayer. And after that, I want to go right into the book of Galatians. That we can break it down, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and precept upon precept. Because most of the church, we don't know how to even share our beliefs, because we don't know what we really believe. We believe in the church that we go to, and everything's cool. That's called nominal Christianity. We just profess the denomination of the church. Look how we are. We're the best. We're the best. That isn't going to save you. You can't witness to anyone with those, you know, kind of feelings. You have to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is our hope. He is our deliverer. And so prayer calms the heart and the soul. And it invites the miracles of God within our life. When we're able to share and see the miracles of God within our life, the things that we go through with our families, with our loved ones, with our finances, looking for healing, where we're looking for something to console the soul with the trials and the tribulations that we go through. It is important that we understand what we're under, the pressure that we're under. And a lot of times, we try to do it ourselves with drugs and booze. We spend over 200 and 60 billion dollars just on liquor. America spends more money than any other country on liquor to console the soul, to feel somewhat good, kind of get gratified in the Lord instead of looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Amen? Amen. And that's why it's important that we understand what is it that God is challenging us that we can do, that we can be encouraged, that we can see the glory of God and he tells us to understand to come together as we see the challenges that are coming our way this new year it's for us to prepare ourselves through prayer and understand what God is sharing with us so that we can do the things that God has called us to do to really have a relationship with the Lord and understand his calling, his leading by the power of the Holy Spirit. That we know who the Holy Spirit is within our lives. That we hunger and thirst for the gifts of the Spirit. For the things that God desires with each and every one of us. That we say, yes Lord God, I need that. I want that so much. I want to serve you any way I can to love you. Yeah. That God would be glorified in our life. So if you have a Bible, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want to share with you what he says here. As Paul the Apostle expresses his heart and his feelings of what is going on at that time. And you know, history has a way of repeating itself. There's nothing new under the sun. History has a way of letting us know the things that we go through, the things that we experience. And the only ones that are hurting themselves is us. When I don't enter into the presence of God, when I don't submerge myself into the word of God, when I don't submerge myself into prayer and seek the Lord and ask for his deliverance in my life, 
then I'm the one that doesn't benefit. God just stands there looking at me. You're not asking. You're not being blessed. You're not growing. You're not excelling. You don't have a testimony because we just are kind of dormant and going nowhere. And God is desiring that we would be strong and vibrant, learning, being encouraged, being able to share with others what we feel, what we've learned, being able to express. That's why the Bible says iron sharpens iron. That when iron sharpens iron, that we sharpen our wits and the things that we desire before God. And today, so many times we just look and everybody just wants to get along. They just want to kumbaya. We have no challenges. We don't look to do what God has called us to do. Be the salt of the earth and the light on the hill. And we're more comfortable with everything else. But Paul the Apostle encourages us in chapter 5, verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those, notice, who are not Christians, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourself and for all around you. Rejoice always, he tells us, to rejoice in the Lord. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I love what he says right after that in verse 19. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the power of God. Do not despise prophecy. The things that God gives us. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Understanding the Lord God and what he gives you when you hold fast. Abstain from evil. The only way that we can accomplish these things is when we know the Lord God and he's touching you, he's challenging you, he's blessing you. As you submit, as you surrender, the word is, in the Hebrew is, I mean the Greek is hupotasso. And I come before the Lord and I bow before him and I'm under him. And he undergirds me, he gives me strength so that I can understand the things that I'm going through, the things that are changes in my mind. So the devil's always haunting you. He's always trying to give you something that is not going to edify you. And so prayer help us to see, to understand, to be led by the Spirit of God. Prayer opens us up to that place of the supernatural where God begins to give us gifts or encourages us in so many ways. When he says, I undergird you, it was in the old days what they would do when they would come across the ocean on the ships and they would hit a storm. They would grab a rope and put it all the way around the bottom of the ship to the top. All the way around the ship and they would tie it together as tight as they could so if the ship started to break apart, the rope would hold it all together, all underneath the belly of the ship, all the way around so that it would hold together firm to the storm that that ship was going to go through. And like us, God wants to undergird us for the storms of life that are out there that we are going to encounter, the things that we're going to go through. He doesn't want to see us shipwrecked or be backsliding back into the world, but be able to be stand strong for the glory of God, to give the power and the witness of the Lord for what he has done in your life. I love the song that said, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He picked me up just in time. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord God. That God can give you the strength and the tenacity to look at what's coming. That you can stand and wither the storms of life and all that we encounter. Prayer is the most intimate expression of the Christian life. It's the most intimate part of our life in expressing ourselves. How we love him. How we just enjoy being around the presence of God. Making time for the Lord and really spending quality, quality time with the Lord in praying and asking, wondering, pondering and saying, Lord God, where do I go here? I want to see this. I want to do that. Today as we look, we don't talk about the Holy Spirit. We don't talk about the gifts of the Spirit. We don't talk about seeing them manifested in the church. We are too busy in our own itinerary. Instead of having that relationship with the Spirit of God, that he begins to touch and heal and bless and restore and edify by challenging you 
with different types of things and gifts that he's given you that you know that you know that you've been touched by God. The supernatural power of God. It's such an exciting thing when you feel the supernatural power of God. That you're able to say, oh Lord God, let me just bask. And I've shared with you before, there is nothing more glorious, more beautiful, more, more wonderful than when you feel the anointing of the Lord. There's not a drug, there's not a high that's greater than when you're under the inspiration of God and the glory of what God does that you just sit there and say, my God, what a blessing to understand the Lord. And why then is it that so much negativity? I agree with you. God bless you. Yet there is so much negativity because we're not spending that quality time and asking God, Lord God, help me, show me. And we live in an age that doesn't want intimacy. I want microwave Christianity. I just want to come and I just want to get blessed and get out of here. Tell me how good I am. Tell me how blessed I am. Tell me that God's going to bless me and he's going to prosper me. And I'm going to be able to see the blessings of the Lord with prosperity. And just let me go on my way. That's not what it's about. It's about us learning, being used of God finding the will of God where do you want to channel me what do you want me to do let me stand in the gap Lord God that I would do your will not my will but your will be done in my life my kingdom go but your kingdom come into my life Lord God that I can see the love and strength and so we can't be negative in this age and time and avoid intimacy because all we're doing is hurting ourselves I need the strength of God I need the intimacy of God I want to hear his voice. I want to feel his touch. I want to see the healing power of God, which is a testimony to you and to others when you feel the essence and the testimony of the healing power and the closeness of the relationship with the Lord that you know that you know that God is with you and you have the confidence that he's blessing you, that he walks before you with the spirit of the living God and surrounds you with strength and dignity and honor and love and fortitude that when you walk you understand the glory of the Lord and when we avoid self-exposure to the Lord and a deep deep friendship with the Lord it affects us it affects us negatively not strong the devil is not afraid of you the devil can destroy you at any given time he's not afraid of you because we're afraid of that because we don't understand the spiritual realm that we're under and just like I show you so much just like in this life you have to eat and sleep and drink water in order to exist in order to survive you need the essence of God the Holy Ghost the fire of Jesus the touch from heaven to be able to know that you know because we are two entities one of the world and the other craves for the blessings of God from above. The blessings of the Lord. Yes, that we can worship Him. Because it affects our spiritual life and well-being. As our relationships either blossom and are blessed before God. Or it collapses into nothing because we're not doing what God has called us to do. The church needs to be personal with the Lord. The church needs to come together and spend quality time in prayer. It's not something that we meander through. It is something that we spend time. Let's not be impersonal with God. Let's be personal with Him in our relationship. That He knows you, that He can count on you. Because to whom much is given, much more is required. That God asks, I want to bless you, I want to bless you, if you'd only let me. And so, some people are untouchable. They're, they don't want to deal with God. Some say, oh, I'm afraid of that. Don't go there. And they're uncomfortable with the touch of God. And they're, untu you know, they're uncomfortable in getting close to others. They don't want fellowship. They don't like coming together and, and, and being a part of the family of God. Because they're not close to the Lord. They don't, they don't want to hear something that is going to stumble them. Because they don't understand the glory of God. They don't understand. See, we come to have church. We come to glorify God as a corporate body. We come to shout and praise God and cry together and, and, and laugh together and just praise the Lord. I don't come here to entertain you. Understand that. I come to have church. 
I come to have church. And when we begin to worship, I'm not here to entertain you or the worship team. We come to glorify God, to exalt God, to glorify God. See heaven come down. See the heavens above come down to us. That we can feel the splendor and the power of God. Not the perspiration of a man, but the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit within our lives. We need to be touched by God. So we cannot feel uncomfortable and close to others. We need to come together and so that we can see the, the, the blessings. Otherwise, we're going to have a prayerless life. Totally don't understand. Prayerless, we, we don't know how to pray. Somebody says, why don't you pray? Oh, not me. Uh, ask him. Uh, ask her. No, that we can say, right now, I want to pray. And as a result, we can say, what a blessing. But so many times I hear, well, you know, Pastor, I'd really like to do that, but I'm so busy. You know, Pastor, I'd really like to do that, but I'm so busy. Well, let's see if God doesn't say, you know what, I really wanted to take you to heaven, but I'm so busy. <laughs> How would you like him to say that to you? You know, it, it's something that God desires that we wouldn't be so busy. But we need to come to the Lord and say, Lord God, I'm not busy for you. And so we live just in a, in a way of just performing. We're constantly performing. We're constantly on the stage. We look like Christians. We act like Christians. But inside, like he says, you've lost your first love. You're not walking with me. You're, it's all about you. And we learn to have great services without the presence of the Holy Spirit and without the presence of Jesus. That, that is lethal. That is, that is something that we need to understand. You know, we need to understand this is dangerous, very dangerous. And rather than to admire the glory and the power and the essence of God and know, see, this is the difference that to know when it's God moving, to know when it's the Lord that's touching you, to know that the glory of God is there. What a joy, what a joy to understand that you don't stand alone. But God is with you. And so we see the challenges that will come this new year. We understand all the things that are going to be there. And sometimes we like to measure ourselves and say, oh, I can handle that. I can handle this. And we measure our character by what we accomplish. That's not how you measure your character. Your character is measured by what you do for God and how you love Him and how you, you want to share His Word and how you want to spend time in learning about Him. It takes time. It takes time for us to learn and to accomplish the blessings of the Lord so we can run and, and not be weary, but to, truly to accomplish all that we can for the glory of God. It is important. It is incumbent because you are the one that are your biggest enemies. And if you don't spend time with the Lord, you won't spend time in eternity. That's the bottom line. You know, he's, he's coming for that remnant, that remnant that is prayed up, that remnant that knows who they are in Christ Jesus. I know that whom I serve, and that is the blessing. I'm not performing, but I'm serving Jesus. This is who I am. I want to bless the Lord. I want to serve him. And so we refuse to, to act sometimes upon the Lord and the biblical realities of what God tells us to learn the word of God so I can understand the doctrine. I can understand I could debate with somebody. I could share with somebody. I could give them hope. I can let them understand they need more than what they think they have. Religion leads us to the door, but religion never takes us over. Religion is full of formalities and practices and traditions and customs. Christianity is a way that God ministers to us and reaches down to us. And he breaks us from within and helps us to understand and blesses us, encourages us. And those things that I never, never dreamed of doing and spending time and going to church and learning the word and learning how to pray. Those things that you never imagined all of a sudden become important to you. And you want and you desire and you crave for the blessings and the power of God in your life. And you will see the changes that will come into you. It is so important that you understand how God wants to do the things that he wants to do. If we only let him always, like he says, be as cunning as a serpent, ready to strike, but as gentle as a dove. As gentle as a dove. That you're able to share your faith, your love, your commitment to the Lord with whoever asks, whoever that you can share with. 
and yet you can see the biblical reality in your life. Yet only the work of the Holy Spirit can help us to understand. It's, it's there. The work of the Holy Spirit that helps us. The eternal power of God. And this is why we must not be prayerless. We must be on fire for the Lord. And I pray that God would ignite each and every one of us full of the Holy Ghost and fire from above, that we can excel, that we can see the blessing of God. I want to see God heal. I want to see God restore. I want to see the miracles of God performed here in this church. I want to see God touch people that thought they would never be touched. I want to see people speak in new tongues and they begin to understand and interpret the tongues and prophesy and the word of discernment. I want to see God move in such a way that the spiritual power of God manifested within us that we know that we know that we've been touched by God. That's the blessing of the Lord. That is when I want to say yes. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Because I, if I have a prayerless life and I don't really spend time with God, I'll never ever achieve the goal that God wants me to achieve. I'll never be able to touch heaven and be able to achieve what God has desired for me because I'm dormant. I'm, I'm not really excelling on the glory of God. I will never achieve the blessing that he has. Everything that he wants to share with me and display before me, I need to achieve and not have a life that's prayerless and not understand the godliness that God desires for me to run after, to see the Spirit of God move. I've had the pleasure of seeing God move in such a beautiful way. It's been a blessing in so many different ways. In March the 10th, I'm going to have a brother here that I've known for many, many years. And he moves in the spiritual realm like you can't believe. I mean, he, he can give you the word of knowledge and, and, and the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, I've known him for years and years. He's going to come down March the 10th. Is Roy de la Garza. He's a, he's a good friend. Uh, we have Willie back. Willie's going to come back and, and motivate the people. Willie, I talked to him the other day. He said, I want to come back and want to share with the people. And so these are the blessings that God wants to give us as we allow God to move and, and use people to help, to, to strengthen, so that we can be encouraged, so that we can see the glory of God in our life. And there is a, a failure to understand the purpose. Why do, don't we know the purpose of which God has called us? And I share with you, purpose is not seen in us. The future is nothing. I need the purpose of God. Until purpose is discovered, existence has no meaning. Until purpose is discovered, existence has no meaning. Because purpose is the evidence of what God is trying to do in your life and my life. He called you for a reason. He's blessing you for a reason. He wants you to excel for a reason. So that we can understand. There's time that you might have to go somewhere and do something that you say, that's out of the supernatural. I mean, that's, I mean, that's out of my world. I don't know nothing about that. God wants you to be able to do that. To have the discernment. Discernment is a gift that God gives us as we pray and understand. And not see the failures in your life but see the goodness and the richness of God and find that purpose and understand the purpose on that Pentecostal feeling of understanding the experience of being touched by God being baptized in the Holy Ghost and feeling the blessings of God that you can discern I mean demons are just as real today as they were in the day of Acts and, and there's times that we don't know how to deal with any of that. We don't know how to deal with those kind of things. And that's why it's important that you understand. God has given you the power to be able to do these things. To be able to excel and lay hands and, and believe in the power of God that's going to do something wonderful. That God's going to give you deliverance. When someone that knows what they're doing and begins to bless you and see the hand of God. Finding our purpose is such a blessing. The Holy Spirit. Feel life as a believer. You walk and talk and are experiencing God like never before. You know the glory of the Lord. You know the essence of God. How God wants to bless you. And don't you ever wonder when you see someone, you go, how could they do that? What's going on? It's not them. It's God that's going and moving through them. And it's God that's excelling, excelling to them. And that's why it's important that you understand 
What is it that God is challenging you? What is it in your life that God is telling you, I want you to do this. I need you to do that. I want you to find your purpose so that I can use you doing this, I can use you doing that. What is the purpose of God in your life that you know that you know there's something going on? Things are different. God is moving. Something is happening in your life. And you feel something that you don't know and you can't put your finger on it. But God is telling you, I'm coming to you. I'm ministering to you. And what I get, I get sometimes so choked up at times when I think that the God of the universe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, the God of Jacob, that he takes time to visit you individually. That whatever you're going through, whatever is happening in your life, in the privacy of your life, God takes time to come to you. And you can feel the power of God out of this universe with the billions of people that are here. Yet he takes time to visit you, to bless you, to touch you, that you can feel the power of God. And that is the glory of the Lord that you can feel, that you know that you know that God is touching you. And you can move forward. It encourages you. It edifies you. It uplifts you. The Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. It's called the Paracletus. He is called the Paracletus. The Holy Spirit is holy for a reason to help us. He's real. And this is why we need an understanding of the Holy Spirit. Because most people don't really know who the Holy Spirit is. They never felt the, pr the, the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. The essence of God through the Holy Spirit. They've never heard the audible voice of God in their innermost being. That all of a sudden you hear a voice and you know it's the leading of God. That's why the Holy Spirit wants to lead us. The nature of prayer opens that up. That's why it's so important in our life that we understand and submit to prayer. Because there you're going to be introduced to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you to intercede. And it's going to give you the wisdom and the discernment. You see, Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And where I go, I go to prepare so you can be with me also. I won't leave you as orphans, he tells us. But he, the Paracletus, the Holy Spirit, will lead you and guide you through all things. Right now we say, well, Jesus is in my heart. Theoretically, yes, I understand that. But theoretically, he's not in your heart. The one that's in your heart is the Holy Ghost that is inside of us to help us, to teach us, to strengthen us. Jesus is making intercession for you and me at the throne of God. Hallelujah. But it's the Holy Spirit that has come inside of us. It's the Holy Spirit that leads us. It's the Holy Spirit that comforts. It's the Holy Spirit that edifies. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the strength to see things and understand the things of God. Because the Holy Spirit is right here, right now, teaching and guiding and leading us. That's why it's so important. We have a time and a window that's open for us to come to know the Lord even greater by the power of the Holy Spirit. Being able to be saturated by the power of God is so important that we understand the understanding of the nature of prayer and its importance within our life. And in our life as we see and we spend time, we, we get up in the morning, first thing you do is say, Lord God, Go into your prayer life before you even start your day. Begin to pray and ask him, Lord, forgive me my sins, my inequities, and my vanities, and all the shortcomings that I have, Lord God. Have mercy on my soul and begin to pray that God will bless you, that God will encourage you, that God will give you the strength. Sometimes we forget where he's taken us out of. And I've got to look back sometimes and say, this is where I was at. Don't get comfortable. Because most Christians start with fire. They want to, oh, they want to change the world. And after two years, a year, they get cold. They start backing up. They start backing up. They're not as zealous. They're not, they're not moving and excelling for God. You seldom see them. And you wonder, what happened to them? What happened? Why did the, the devil come and destroy them so quick, so quick? Because... They weren't grounded in the Word of God. They weren't grounded in Jesus. And when you're grounded in Jesus, you can understand the glory of God. It, it, it costs you. I will never say it doesn't cost you. It's a blessing, but it's a blessing that you're doing 
what you want to do. Like I told my wife, I've got the better of two worlds. I'm retired. I've been retired for going on 16 years, but you know what? I'm doing what I've loved, and I've been preaching and teaching for going on 38 years, and I don't regret a thing about it. And working and having a full-time job. Having a full-time job and working 10 hours a day, six days a week, and I never, ever said, well, I'm not going to go up and preach. I'm tired. I'm not going to do this. Never. Never. And I say, you know what? I would go out there and I would praise the Lord. And I'm still doing it. And I'm not a young man no more. But it doesn't matter. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen. God is good. Amen. Yes, he is. That's why when you, you see people, it, it's like it hurts you because you see how the devil robs steals and under, undermines them, and pretty soon they're lost. A soldier lost in action. What happened to them? They're lost. Nobody knows where they went. Nobody knows what happened to them. They're lost in action. And yet God is dying that we would be able to move and excel and be blessed. There's a lot of things that I would love to do, but I can't. I can't. I just, it doesn't seem like it's me. I'd rather serve the Lord any way I can. Any, any, and I'm not saying, well, I'm deprived of this and I'm deprived. Not even. I don't feel that at all. And I'm telling you, in, in the 38 years that I've been serving the Lord, you can count with a hand and a half a hand that I've missed services on a Sunday. Because I don't miss. And I don't say, well, you know what? I'm going to give it to somebody else. Let somebody else come and preach. I'm tired. And let somebody else come and preach. And let somebody else come and preach. That's my duty. And I never went out on that because, you know what? God called me and I'm going to be there through thick and thin. No matter what, I'm going to preach the gospel. God has asked me to do that and I'm going to do it. And that's the blessing of that. That's it. I won't. You know, and I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard for a lot of people to be steadfast. I know it's hard, but I challenge you. It's for your own good. I challenge you to let God begin to bless you. And you will see the fruit of your labor. You will see the blessings of God, the importance of following the Lord. And we can also learn how to understand the mental part of it, of what it does in your mind. How the devil comes at you. How the devil wants to undermine you. How the devil just wants to discourage you. How he wants to mislead you. And that's why we need to understand and have the spirit of discernment. To know if that is of God or is that the enemy that's trying to come in? Is that the enemy over here? You have to know the mental part of it. And so when you begin to meditate on the things of God, you begin to meditate on the glory of God, and you focus on the blessings of the Lord, you will begin to see things different as you ponder, ponder, ponder the things of God. And you regurgitate the glory of God. You begin to understand the scriptures. And as you begin to read, you begin to weep because you understand something different. And God is speaking to you as an individual. And you will see the glory of God. This, this is not something religious or fake or something that we just follow through because we're just like dumb sheep just going. No, it's for us to experience. Experience the essence of God one on one and know that he lives in you. The blessings of following the Lord with the joy and the power of God. Then you can walk in understanding the importance of life. And we can also learn truly how to meditate. Meditate. Meditate in this word. Say, Lord God, I want to meditate. I want to focus my thoughts. I want it to reflect on me, Lord God, as I ponder your glory. You're so beautiful, Lord. You're so wonderful. And you begin... To share sometimes and, and you just stay there. Because the Spirit of God gets you. And all of a sudden you're weeping before God. You go, where did that come from? That is the glory of God. And all of a sudden you're sharing and boom. God touches you and you go, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. God is so wonderful. And that's why you got to be ready to whatever God leads you. Whatever God is guiding you. And like I shared on Wednesday night, I went down and I'm looking for a new truck because my truck, I kind of blew it up going back and forth so many times. I put so many miles on it. And I went down and talked to the dealer and we're talking and talking with the salesman. And after talking to him, I said, okay, now that you try to sell me a truck, now let me tell you about Jesus. And we started sharing about, I started sharing with him about the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. 
Before I left, I led them to the Lord. And there was people walking all around. We had our eyes closed and I was leading them to the Lord right there. I said, don't be embarrassed. Forget these people. They're not going to take you to heaven. You need Jesus. Yeah. And I shared the gospel with him right there, right in the showroom, floor room. I shared the gospel, led him to the Lord. I went back and we talked. He said, man, God's really blessing me, man. And I said, you're going to do me one thing. I said, if I buy that truck from you, you're going to come to church. He says, in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat, I'll come to church. So he lives up in San Diego, but God is good. And I told him, you need to do that. And he says, I will. I promise you. I promise you. So you never know. You never have any idea where God is going to open the door. You never know who you're going to share with. You never know what's going to happen. That's the blessing. When I, started, when I was working and God touched me there at my job and I was there and I said, man, all of a sudden I was saved and things were going on. And I was like, I mean, just, I was filled with the power of God. I was in a honeymoon like I never wanted it to end. I mean, everything I touched, everything I did, I was just crying all the time, just praising God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And everybody said, oh, he's a fanatic, he's a fanatic. And I used to hang with these guys. They knew where I came from, the barrio and the whole bit. But you know what? They just got to see Jesus. And after a while, I got to lead a lot of them to the Lord. I got to lead even supervisors to the Lord. They even gave me a room upstairs that I was able to have prayer at lunchtime with the guys that would go up and we'd even lay hands and sometimes cast out a couple of demons here and there. But God was good. He always has been there. So you never know what God is is planning to do in your life. That's why when we get prayed up, prayed up for the glory of God, and you ponder his word in deep thought, also you see the tenderness, the blessings of God, and you begin to see the glory of the Lord that begins to touch you, and you say, Lord God, only the Holy Spirit can reveal the truth to you. And we need all the truth for our children, for our grandchildren, for our family members, for our siblings, for our parents, that they're alive, for those around you that you're able to share what God is doing in your life. And they're able to see that this is not a joke. It's not something that, oh, there he goes again. Now he's preaching Jesus. Tomorrow he'll be drinking. No, 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 no. It's something that you see that you're steadfast. It's just steadfast in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that way they can see the truth and the reality of the Holy Spirit, the truth of God, the truth that is foretold of the Spirit of the living God is known. You see, the Apostle Paul understood that. The Apostle Paul went to a conversion that was tremendous. When I begin to teach the book of Galatians, I'm going to break it down. You're going to be able to see Paul's life, and yet, at the same time, you're going to see the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles, between all these things that we don't even understand at times, and where we stand, what are we, who's right, who's wrong. Uh, what do I do here? What do I do there? This way you will understand and stand on solid ground for the Lord that you will know the words of God and understand the reality of the truth of God. In other words, these truths are foretold to us. In the Old Testament, they were made known to the apostles and the prophets and the New Testament era. It was also by the Spirit of God. They began to change people. They saw the miracles and the signs and wonders. And the apostles and the prophets were enlightened because of the Bible, because of the Spirit of God, because of how God enlightened us and blessed us. So I encourage you, don't, don't let the devil rip you off this coming year. In other words, next year, don't look at yourself. Some of you might be even backslidden next year. No. Or just say, well, I'm just in the same boat. No, we need to be on fire. We need to excel for the Lord. We need to be greater than we've ever been. Each year that you, you take a step forward, step forward, step forward to the glory of God and seeing God do all things, the deep things of God to be known in your life, that you can see the blessings of the Lord. You know, I've, I've been doing this, and I'd love to see the essence and the glory of God. In other words, the Spirit of God is one member. They're the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And yet, He's the head. But yet, they're synonymous. In other words, they're equal. The Father calls the Son God, the Son calls the Father God, the Holy Spirit is called God. And so they're synonymous, they're equal in Godhead. And we have to learn to understand the wisdom and the truth of God. 
to be able to interpret the importance of what God is trying to get to you and so that we will understand the will of God is the greatest thing that God can give us when we understand the will, the knowledge, the presence, the nature, the posture of God that we're able to share. Not the nature and the posture of a church or what the church believes in and all their programs. Those are great. They're wonderful. But you cannot leave God out of the equation. You need God in the equation. Otherwise, we become just like the church of Ephesus. You look good, you sound good, you walk good, blah, 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 but you lost your first love. I don't want the Lord to say that. I want the Lord to say, you guys were on fire, you guys did what I called you to do, and you're still doing what God is, is doing in your life. God will work in believers to benefit the entire body of Christ. So that as we work together, we will see the body of Christ. Not just the individual Christian, but all of us coming together in the spirit and seeing the spirit of God in us. The, the beautifulness of understanding the diversity of God within our lives. It takes all kinds of nationalities, all kinds of people, the diversity that God has. Learning from one another as the iron is sharpened with iron. And we learn from one another how to cope, how to be blessed. The knowledge to see the word of God, to see the faith. And here as believers... We see the extraordinary blessings of God. And like the miracles, I pray that we would see miracles, pray for miracles in this church. That God would begin to perform miracles, signs, and wonders. People getting first saved, healed, blessed, restored, and baptized as God begins to do his work. And telling us, you know, as we look at the book of Revelation and understanding the future, the matatalta, the things that are going to come to pass... But yet to see the revelation of God, the divine presence, the divine power, the explanation given to you and me that we can understand what God is revealing to us at this time in our lives. Don't get caught up with everything else. Don't be slothful, but be on fire because you never know the day or the hour that God says, today you're coming home. But I'm not ready. It's too bad you're coming. And if we're not ready, God forbid. That's why it's important that we understand the glory of God and be ready. Because he's the God of the past, the present, and the God of the future. And the past also discerning of spirits, being able to see what God is doing. Some of you has got the gift of casting out demons like you can't believe. You can see a person and say, that guy's demon possessed. You can do things like crazy. But if you don't experience that and you don't let God work in that in your life... You'll never see the glory of God doing miracles in your life and seeing the, the blessing that he wants to bestow you with, the works of God. The importance is that, you know, that, that we speak in tongues, we understand the glory of God, we speak in other languages as God translates and explains to us the different languages. And that's a blessing in of itself. But we cannot understand what I'm saying. We can't get caught up in emotion. It has to be ordered. And when we pray, we have order to understand what the Lord is saying. The Holy Spirit of God should never be pushed away or ignored. Never. Never be pushed away or ignored in our services. Because it's my itinerary. It's my church. And I'm going to make the rules in here. Forget that noise. It's all about God. This is His church. You're His people. That's the glory of the Lord. And that's why we have to stand strong. In the glory of God. And never grieve the Holy Spirit. But walk in the power of God. And see the enlightenment of God. By whom you and I were sealed. And you were called to bless the Lord. You were called and sealed by the glory of God. You see the fact can be. You know if, we, if we're not careful. We grieve the Holy Spirit. By not doing what God desired for us. So I desire that he would touch you. And the Holy Spirit is a person. And the Holy Spirit can get grieved. If we're not careful. And that's why it's so important that when I look at the Holy Spirit, I know that I know that God is touching. He wants to influence you in the blessings. And he wants to love us because he's the person that God has given us. And so we cannot grieve him, the work of the Holy Spirit of God, to lead the Christians and lead us into repentance, into understanding, into the glory of God. So I pray that as we go through this time of learning, 
how to pray, how to exalt the Lord, how to understand, and not just be a church that has services, but you don't know Jesus. That is dangerous, that is lethal. And we've learned to do that. The church in, in general has learned to have services to do all kinds of things without Jesus and without the Holy Spirit. That is dangerous. We need the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus so that we can see the hand of God. Don't go by growth. Don't go by growth. Go by the people of what God is doing. Because Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons can fill up stadiums too. And so could the, the occults. So we, we look at the growth of God. Amen? Of what God is doing. How God is blessing people. And people's lives are being changed by the power of the living God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus. We need to let God. We need to let God. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. And as you go, go in peace. Tell someone about Jesus. And remember to love one another. I pray that the grace and the healing power of the Holy Spirit would touch you and challenge you and uplift you and strengthen you and guide you and lead you in every area of your life that you would be full of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray for the glory of God. May he wash you in his blood. May he saturate you in his blood. And may you feel the essence and the glory of the presence of the Lord in your life. God bless you. We love you in the Lord. Go in peace. And remember, tell someone about Jesus. Love Thank you. you. Jesus. Thank you.